report. Well, the Lord lets you live this stuff before you get up here so that it comes real out of the heart, you know, to let you all know what God is doing with the Spirit in y'all. Because I, I know, we know that everybody goes through the same thing, it seems like, all the time. Everybody gets to go through the same thing. He's not no respecter of persons. He's the trials that I go through, that everybody else has to go through, too. And usually other churches and other people that believe in the same thing. And that's where he says, I know what you have need of before you even ask. I know what the church needs this morning. <clears throat> before you even come in here, I already knew what the, you wanted the Spirit to say to you. And it's called the battle of the mind. And as we have talked, and <clears throat> excuse me, you'll have to forgive me. I, I'm overcoming what the enemy's tried to place on me is for this cough thing. And I just want to acknowledge now ahead of time that if I get into one of those, forgive me, I'm overcoming and I've got the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. As of yesterday, we discovered that what has happened to the body, and we're not thinking it's just us guys that are in there, that there's an attack on the sleep realm. Oh, oh. Yes. yes. There's an attack on the mind battle before you get to bed. And before you even get to the pillow, there's a bad attack on your mind to try to get you thinking on those things that are not so just and pure and lovely in a good report. Mm -hmm. There's those things that are trying to get you to worry. It can get all uh, you know, bent out of shape just before you lie down. Anybody else had this experience? Absolutely. So the idea is the fact that the enemy is trying to get you worn out. The first thing he can do is that is to take away your sleep. Mm -hmm. Because you know and I know... The elder I get, the more I need that rest to renew my yeah. strength. Yeah. And he knows that. So if he can interrupt that sleep, he's got a battle. But he forgot the overcomer also with that recognizes the attack and gets on his knees and starts praying in the spirits, which will thwart his plans. If you recognize it ahead of time instead of getting all worried and worked up, take authority over that. Take Amen. that and you, you, weapons of your warfare and recognize that's the tactic of the enemy. We're not ignorant of his devices. We know that he's going to try to get you out of the realm of the spiritual. Because guess what? That's where God is. That's where all the power is. That's where the anointing. That's where all your wisdom, guidance, and direction, everything comes from the spiritual realm. And he can get you mind, think on that, which is oh, to worry, doubt, fret. <laughs> and I like that word. I haven't looked it up yet, but there's, everybody pretty much knows what that one is. Fretting about tomorrow, which you can't change anyway. Or what's behind you in the past, which you should have been under the blood and forgiven. Amen. So he's trying to get you out of the realm of the spiritual realm. It's a battle. It usually attacks at the worst unopportune time, <clears throat> right when you need that rest. So, you know, the, the Lord was trying to show me, maybe you need to take a little time before you go to bed to take warfare upon you. <coughs> maybe. Yes, Lord. I think you got the right answer there. So there's a battle going on for your mind. What's happening in the world right now? Is it occupying your mind and your thought life? Has the fear overcome the uh, faith? Has the what you see out there and overseas in Jerusalem and in Israel and all that stuff that's going on? Is that occupying your mind to the point where faith can't operate? Because your mind is so wrapped up in that? Guess where that comes from? That's one of the tactics of the enemy is to try to get you looking on the pain, things of this world and to take you out of the spiritual realm. We're all in the same boat. We all have the same flesh and blood. We all have the same mind. Some are better than others. <laughs> Some more uh, in tune to the things of the Spirit than others. That's just the way it is. That's the way God made it. He didn't make us all as AIs. Yeah. <laughs> we are not robots here. Yeah. I don't see anybody standing up and walking out because they're a robot and can't handle the truth. So, <laughs> If you would turn to Romans 12, and I'll start this. Father, I come before you this morning, and I thank you that you know what each one of these people needs in this body. You brought them here today to hear what you put in my heart. It's simple. 
It's just what we need sometimes to renew those things that we have heard, at least at any time, they should slip away. And I ask you, Father, just to let your spirit have its will be done. I ask you, to Father, to minister each person in here today. That when they go forth in the power of the spirit, that they'd be encouraged and uplifted, convicted if need be. And Father, give me the words to say that would glorify you and edify you and uplift your church. Because that's why we're here. I don't have anything that they haven't heard already before in this message, but sometimes we just need to hear it again. So I ask you, Father, to open the eyes of our understanding to the things of the spiritual realm. Help us to see our way of escape. Help us to see the weapons that you've given to us and how to use them. And most of all, Lord, let our hearts be in tune to the things that you want us. Be gentle as doves, but wise as serpents. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, Romans 12. I'm glad you're all there before I am. We all know we have a battle for us. This is not new, but there's some times that we just need to hear again to refresh our memory, to go about and say, hey, Lord, there may be something I missed. Maybe something I need to hear again in order because the enemy comes in. He doesn't change his tactics, but God's word is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. That's what fights off these battles that you're in. And you know the mind battle, everything stems out of the mind for some reason. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. You can either be defeated or encouraged. You can have a victory or be downtrodden. It's your choice based upon what you know by your spiritual condition. In Romans 12, verse 1. I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not. I think that's a, there's an admonition right there. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Being transformed, the only way you can be transformed because the world has had you for a while, most of us, let's go to say the younger generation may not have the battle that we've had. But a few of us <laughs> that, <laughs> that have seen some things, and we talked about that yesterday, how we, the things that we've seen since Black and white TV all the way up through now. People on the moon. Internet thing. You got a wristwatch that you can watch the movies on nowadays. I mean, the things that we have seen, the progress in the, natu in the natural realm is just as mind-blowing. And yet God has got everything under control in that area. And he allowed and permit these things to happen because our world is changing. Now... <clears throat> The problem is that we started to be programmed, ingrained into this world and its ways for so many years. Now God comes along after you got saved and filled with the Spirit and says, now I need you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind to the things of my spiritual realm. Because you have been ingrained with the things of the world for so long, guess what's up there? There's a battle up there because it has to be transformed. It has to kick out all those beliefs all those things that you were taught that weren't of God, that does not, you don't find them in here. And be transformed with what's in here to occupy this computer up here. Now it's called rebooting. <laughs> and usually sometimes you have to unplug the computer to reboot. Because that's what it said. Well, have you ever tried unplugging it? Well, I've tried many a time to unplug it, but it won't shut down when I want it to. It just keeps going. And then God has his ways and means committee to unplug you so that you get still before him so he can hear, you can hear his voice. And there's times when the rebooting isn't a fun process because what he puts back in there, well, something has to leave in order for something to come in, okay? You're being reprogrammed by the things of God. And that's spiritual things. The natural mind does not receive the things of the spiritual realm. You know, we've read that before. You see that in Hebrews all over. 
The natural mind cannot receive the things of the spiritual because it does not even be able to do so. Guess what? We are fearfully and wonderfully made. How can two things occupy the heads at the same time? The world's ways and God's ways. Well, guess what? You don't do that. One has to be kicked out and the other be reprogrammed in. When you reboot your program in your computer, you delete certain things out of there so that you make room for more gigabytes. God wants to replace more gigabytes up there with the things of his spiritual realm. Yes. I didn't receive this because I this is not my realm, the computer realm. So when he gives me all this stuff, I go, oh, what? Gigabytes. You know, I barely know what a byte is, let alone a gigabyte. So he uses it in terminology that most of us can understand. <laughs> More than most. Dude. So what he wants to do is replace that old way of thinking to the things of his spirit. That takes time. Sometimes it takes a lot of deleting. <laughs> delete, 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 delete. The button wore out on my computer. Delete, 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 delete. Because it's got to be out of there in order to fill it with something of the just, pure, lovely, and a good report. That takes time because it just doesn't happen overnight. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew it to something better that is just, pure, and lovely, and a good report. That you know which is good and acceptable and perfect. Now God is after us because he says you're being influxed right now with this world. It's just compounding and destroying everything at you that it can. To try to get you to think on these things of this world. And God is telling us time after time, everybody from this pulpit up here, to let us know that, hey, you've got to discern that which is good, just, pure, lovely, and a good report. And let go of those things that are not pleasing to God. Well, how do you know what's not pleasing to God? Glad you asked. Here it is. This is what tells you what is not pleasing, what is not acceptable, what is not perfect for God. Right here. That's your manual for that computer up there. And if you don't know what this manual says to replace it with, how are you going to replace it with that which is good, just pure, lovely, and a good report? You've got to have something to put back in there when you delete the other stuff out. And sometimes that takes God's work only to delete those things because they're been ingrained in there a long time. I'd say you know, a lot of our being is the things that we have heard in the past that they're stuck in there. I mean, they're glued to it. I'm not going to let go of them anyway. I like that stuff. You know? Well, your flesh likes that stuff, but the spiritual realm says, hey, you've got to change, Dwayne. You've got to change your way of thinking. You can't be looking at this stuff and put that in your heart because that does not promote peace or fruit or righteousness. It does not produce those things that God is after. Just pure, lovely, and a good report. The love of Jesus. Because what do you see in this world? Hate. That's what the enemy is trying to put in. You see that daily. You see it. You watch it. Because it's in front of you everywhere you go. Try to drive down CY Avenue and see what you see. Is that hate? Well, my way over your way? Can I get an amen on that? But I say, this is what God is saying to the church in this hour. You cannot be like this world and still survive and make it in. You have to be renewed, transformed. You have to be transformed. You have to do this, Dwayne. You have to let me reboot your computer and delete those things out of there. But you have to be willing to fill it with what my word says. Otherwise, you're going to have a battle you can't win. The enemy's going to throw everything at you to try to get you out of that spiritual realm. We know that. We're not ignorant of his devices. He's going to throw everything at you to try to get you. He's going to use anybody he can to try to get you out. That spouse right next to you, your kids, neighbor, workplace, whatever he will use, whatever he can to try to get you out of the spiritual realm. To get you act like the rest of this world. That's what he wants to transform you to look like. God's spirit is well in working within you to will and work for his good pleasure. Are you in tune to this spirit or the one that's out here in the world? Choose this day who you shall serve. The battle is up here. Am I going to accept the report of the doctor that come 
to me and tells me that I have this situation and the next thing you know, I've got to go there and there and there. And I said, I come away from there and I thought, oh, Jesus, thank you, Father, for a choice. I can choose to believe that or I can choose to believe what God said about this thing. It's my choice. Choose this day what you will believe. So I go home. This is what the word says. I choose to believe what God says about it. Here comes the end of the day. Here comes the night. Yes. I'm tired. I'm yes. weary and well doing. The flesh is weary. It needs to be replenished. You lie down and all of a sudden the bombardment comes. Yeah. Of the thought life. The fear of what you heard today. It grips you. And I thought, where in the world did this come from? Doing. Where did this come from? You know where it came from, but it's what do you do with it? The grip, the fear gripped you so hard that you're now wide awake as ever. No way there's going to be any sleep cometh, but forth yeah. tonight. <laughs> so you have to sit back and say, all right, I choose to get up and fight the good fight of faith instead of laying here and try to <laughs> insomnia all night long. You have to make a choice. What are you going to believe? I'll, you know. <coughs> If you don't get up, you're not going to get any sleep. And if I lay there, I'm not going to get any sleep. Choose. Hey, that's only smart. Common sense is get up and battle. Take authority over that. Pray in the Spirit. Get into the Word. See what God says. Take your authority that God gave you. I have authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions, the enemy of every kind, that none should hurt me. Amen. Bam. And then take his Word and he says, I have the power and I have the authority. I have a sound, just mind. And I am not ignorant of the enemy's devices and what he's trying to do. And what you're giving God is that ammunition to come work on your behalf. Mm -hmm. His word is living and active. We taught on this a couple weeks ago about this, about the words of your mouth, the things that you speak. Mm -hmm. And God says, my word will not return void without accomplishing what it intended in your life. <coughs> Dwayne, you want rest. Speak my word. I... When it re comes up to heaven, it will not return void without accomplishing what it intended. It intended for me to have the victory that night, very that instant, so I can turn my head over and go to sleep. That's what he's after. He's after us to use his word to fight the battles that are in there. To come away victorious, because that glorifies God. When you use his tactics, when the enemy comes in with his tactics, and you're caught in the middle. Choose what you're going to do. So you choose to get up because you can't sleep anyway. You might as well get up and pray. Take authority over that thing. And use that faith. Remember, God gave you that mustard seed of faith. He gave you the faith to believe this initially. And he gave you the measure of faith. If he gave you a mustard seed to say to that mountain, be thou removed, that's enough. It's enough. So you take authority over that. You exercise your faith. You demonstrate by your actions that you believe God over what your head is telling you. You shut it off as best you can. I'm not saying I'm perfect on this, but I have to fight. I just have to resist and I have to say, God, you gave me this right. You gave me the authority. You gave me a peaceful, restful night's sleep according to your word. And it will not return void without accomplishing what it intended. Do I have the victory every night over this? No, there's some battles that go all night long. <gasps> no. Yep. I have fought all night long some nights in the spiritual realm. And it's casting down imaginations and everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's that serious in this hour. God is letting us know that, hey, y'all, you're in a battle. It's a battle for your survival of the spiritual realm. And if you don't fight, you've given in. You've got to take this and renew your mind. You've got to renew this with what God says about your circumstances. That's why he gave you those weapons. Because he knows the circumstances are going to come. They won't be perfect circumstances. And it won't happen at the you know, point of oh, sunrise. Here we go. I'm going to fight now. No, 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 no. It usually happens in the most inopportune time. You're in the wall, you're in, you're in line at Walmart, and then all of a sudden, your button gets pushed. How do you react? You react according to what God's Spirit is saying to you, 
or you act in the world's ways. You get upset and worried because you're in a hurry, and that person behind in front of you is just taking their time. And you know, and, you know, you know, God does His work on you wherever you're at. He'll use anything He's at to push your button, and He's trying to teach you something. Do you think God just waits for the opportune time? Let's see, it's 10 o'clock, it's time for Dwayne to have his trials now. No. There's no set schedule. It could happen in the middle of the night, it could happen at Walmart, it could happen on the streets driving down Casper. Who pushes your buttons? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to follow what God said? Or are you going to react to the way the world does? Choose this day who you shall serve. The battle starts up here. You either won or lost. How they say? You're either victorious or defeated by the way you walk out the door. If you spent time preparing for what lies ahead out that door, bury it today. When you walk out that door, there's an enemy out there to try to steal what you just heard. Try to get you to wait where it does not have any effect on what you do. That's the battle you're in. And God has said, you got to fight. And that's what he's telling the church. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Are you going to love everybody? Are you going to have that Christ-like attitude when you walk out? Are they going to see Jesus or are they going to see the world in you? Choose this day who you shall serve. Whew. Romans 8. You're in the neighborhood. Why don't we go to Romans 8 and see what else we got to see. Romans 8. Have I got all this down? No. What do you think I'm up here doing teaching it? This is for me. Not y'all. i got to hear this first because it's for me. Because I haven't got this down yet. So you can come along for the ride, but this is for me today. I need to hear this. I need this mind thing settled. Romans 8, verse 5. For those who are according to the flesh <laughs> set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. The mind set on the flesh is death, oh. but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not able even to do so. See, there it is. It's right there. You see it. I just didn't make that up. <laughs> it's a battle. And you could be either on God's side or not, choosing by what you say, your words of your mouth. You set your mind on the things of the flesh. You're going to reap, you know, the sowing and reaping. You will reap what you sow. You sow to the flesh, you'll reap from the flesh. Death and destruction. You sat and you uh, sow to the things of the Spirit, you'll reap life, peace, and the fruitful of what God has to offer. All his benefits. And you're caught in the middle. Well, Lord, what do I do? Choose which one do you want. I, he can't do that for you. He's a gentleman. He doesn't come in there and force his way in. He wants you to make that decision. Daily, hourly, where are you driving or where you're not driving. When you're standing in line or when you're not standing in line. Choose to stay with yourself there. When you go out the door, have you made up your mind that you're going to serve Jesus today? Choose to stay who you shall serve. Okay. You got that down. Philippians 4, please. My God is faithful, and he is delivering us from sin, sickness, and poverty. And that's my belief. See, I choose to believe what this says over what I feel. Not every day it works like that. Some days I get the victory. Some days I take a little while longer to get in prayer and fasting and doing what I need to do to get the victory. I think the flesh that's called flesh winning. The flesh won that day. Then I got to go back and shore it up and try to get the gear, ground game back that I lost. But that's my choice. Nobody can affect it. I can't blame that on anybody. Well, it's the postman. It didn't deliver the mail on time. That's what's wrong. No, that's not the postman's fault. It's yours. Philippians 4. All right. So we've got this down to where this is a battle. So what do we do about it? What do we do about it, church? What is the Spirit saying to you this morning? Here it is. Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. Get that? And supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. 
He's the only one that's going to fix it. You can't do this in your own strength and power. Not by your might, not by my, your power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know, guard, you know, God wants to guard your heart because he knows the enemy is going to throw darts at you. You've got to guard it. Some may hit it, but if you've got your weapons up, you've got that shield of faith, bing, they just bounce off. If you don't have the shield of faith, sometimes they hit their targets. Sometimes your mind gets assaulted. Not by the peanut either. Bad joke. Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, he's after your heart. The devil is trying to get in there to get in there and sow seeds of discord, anger, bitterness, resentment, fear, worry. And God said, I want to guard that. I give it to you the weapon to put up against it. Guard. Shield of faith. Breastplate of, breastplate of righteousness. Slow down, buddy. The race horse is going. Da -da 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 -da. And when you get all this stuff in your head, you want it out right away because it's so good. But God said it don't do any good if you just blurt it out and it doesn't go where I want it to go. So there's a process called. <laughs> Whoa, Dwayne. All right. You see these things. Guard your hearts and minds because that's where the battle lies. Your heart, out of it, issues of life, what you say. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, which either justifies or condemns the person. We've taught on that one here lately. So what you say is what you get. Careful what you say. <laughs> Take on these things that are just, pure, and lovely. Guard your mind with the things that are just, pure, lovely, and good report. Think on these things. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those that is... Uh, you get a thought in there, and I think about it all day long. It's hard to stop that. Yes. You get in a train track. You can't get out sometimes unless something takes you out of that track. A higher power to get you out of that rail that you're on. Fear. Yeah. Woo! That's a big one. Yeah. If you're on that track of fear, what's going to take you out? The only thing out there is God's Word. It's living... And it's active and sharper than a two-edged sword. And it can lift your thought life out of that. Because he says, I will cleanse your thoughts. From dead works to serve a living God. I will cleanse your thoughts life. But you have to bring it to me. Confess it as, Lord, I have this problem. I need help with this fear in my life. I need it off that track so that I'm not thinking on it all the time. Where the enemy has access to it, and just any time he chooses to push my button, he'll throw fear in there, and the next thing you know, I'm on that track down there, Douglas, and here I go. Can't get off the track unless something takes me off that track. Thus, it is written. His word is living and active. Living. But you have to take it off the pages. You have to take that word off there for his word, because he watches over his word to perform it. He's jealous over his word. Because that's what God is. He's his word. And it's powerful. And it's living and active. And it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Don't ever forget that. This thing is powerful. But you have to use that mustard seed of faith to take it off these pages and use it toward those circumstances that are coming against you. Well, I've got this cough. I've got this again. What does God say about it? It is written, Jesus bore my sicknesses and infirmities. His word will not return void without accomplishing me what he intended it to do. Amen. Heal me. Deliver me. Set me free. That's when he gets the glory. And the devil cannot come against the word of God if it's mustard seed of faith. And then well, how does that faith come in there? I need more faith. Pray in the spirit. Faith cometh by hearing what you're doing here today. Sitting here hearing the word. As we prayed, we believe that God will open the eyes of your understanding to what he's trying to say to the church in this hour. Church, like you said, this is not the hour to shrink back. We've got at our doorsteps the world headed towards Jesus' return. 
What else has he got? You see it. You're not ignorant. The Spirit identifies with what's happening according to what you've heard in this word. God is fulfilling his word in this world today. I'm glad it's his, his pace, <laughs> not what the world says. It, it, God is holding it back. You can see that, or else things would have really got worse a long time before now. Things would have erupted because God has got a control over it. That is your hope. That is your conviction. That is your peace of mind that God is in control of this thing. Let him do what he does best, and you do what you do best. Surrender. Yield. Let your thought life be renewed. He's given us time before they're at the doorsteps. We don't have that. We talked about that the other day. I can walk around more at park and not fearful of a bomb landing in my lap, say, boom. Yeah. Yeah. I can walk downtown without the fear of somebody shooting out a window at me. Yeah. We have that, y'all. We have that peace right now. Take advantage of it. Jesus said, make the most of it every day. We don't know what will happen tomorrow. Take no thought for tomorrow, but live for today. La, 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 la. Bad joke. <laughs> Showing my age, eh? <laughs> Second Corinthians, please. Second Corinthians 10. God does not want you to be ignorant of what's going on in this world. He wants you to be wise but gentle as doves. Not taking what you know and just, you know, blurting it out there to somebody. That, oh, you need to get it. No, he says, take my word. Be gentle as doves. Was it the way you learned Jesus? No, it came across to me as love. Take that example of how you received Jesus and take it to somebody else. Don't take this word and beat somebody up over it. Second Corinthians 10. That was free, by the way. Four and five. For the weapons of your warfare are not of flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Hmm. You have fortresses in your mind? The, the weapons. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. We are taking, we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That takes some work. Because that makes... Your head hurts sometimes because it has to be energized constantly, 24 hours a day. Sorry, I find my brain gets tired from the battle <clears throat> that's being apt to be fought up there all the time. Because the enemy is insulting you with this stuff constantly. One way or another, when you least expect it, boom, you've got to have your shield up. You've got to have the weapon. You recognize the enemies and his tactics. When does he occur? Anytime you've you got your defenses down, seems like, never fails. Wow, why didn't I have my guard up? I didn't know that. Ever. I don't know how he knows that, but he does. He knows, right? Oh, guess what? He's had a, lot, a little work at this. He's had enough time with the, those that have gone before us and had practice on those before us to get them to see how they react. So guess what? He's, not, he's got his tactics down because he already knows what works on humans. He knows their minds. He knows what appeals to them. Flesh first. Oh, the flesh. Oh, yeah. The mind. Yeah. The heart. Yeah. Those areas that are there that actually are the person's soul. The heart thinketh. On as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Ooh, if I can touch his heart and get him to believe in doubt and unbelief, then I've got him one. If I can plant in there fear and worry and anxiety and doubt, I've got him bound up. How many times have you felt bound up? Why am I feeling like, what? what's so anxious about? Because the enemy has sowed stuff in there and you believed it instead of taking authority over it. Now you've let it take root. Like I said, Thomas said this many times before, the birds will fly in, but they cannot roost. You don't let them roost in their head. You're going to have those thoughts come through. But don't let them stay there very long. Kick them out. You have the authority. You have the power. You have a sound, disciplined mind. You have the mind of Christ. Take that positive promises that God gives you and recognize that your power is in the word and what he's already given you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Everything hinges on what you know that God has done for you and what you are in Christ Jesus. Everything hinges on your 
relationship with the Almighty God. Choose or not choose. Okay, where are we at? Uh, four or five? We did that. Yeah. All right, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10. Yeah, we're there. Four or five, yeah, we did that. Okay, so let's go over to Colossians 3, please. Colossians 3. We have no excuse. We have everything given to us. He's already got the battle won. Yeah, the uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. To give you wisdom and guidance of how to operate with his weapons that he given to you. But if our minds are not renewed to the things of the spiritual one, how are you going to receive the things that the spirit speaks to your heart? You can't do that. You've got to be spiritually minded. So when the spirit speaks to us and says, hey... Use that shield of faith, that uh, breastplate of righteousness, that, that, that sword of the spirit with this situation. Well, what is he talking about? Well, if you haven't had time to study, if you haven't said it in the word, you're not going to know what the sword of the spirit does for you. That's why it's so important to be transformed and renewed by what God is telling you you have. Sec, uh, Corinthians 3, verse 2. Set your mind... Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of this earth. you got to set them on the things of above in order to get the victory, in order to be victorious. In order to win this battle, you've got to have your mind set on the things above. That's why he's given us this time to get all this down, because he knows it's going to take time. I believe that's why some of the things in heaven, because he knows this church is not ready yet. Church has got to be ready for his return. Because if he comes back, he wants a church without spot or wrinkle. Well, if you've got all the spots and wrinkles going on, it does not work as well. Things don't work. An army that has not had its training, hasn't gone through boot camp, hasn't done all those things to prepare for war. When they get into war, what do you do when you get into war when it's heated battle at you? Throw your arms down and run off? That's what he's after. He doesn't want a church that cringes. He wants a church that's powerful, mighty. Amen. And the only way to do that is to get your training in when it's time. Amen. Training. Your idea of the act of, you, you know, you go through boot camp. Yeah, you've got all these things. You, you, what are the first thing they try to do? Break down that self-sufficiency of you and recognize the obedience to those in authority over you. Jesus. The Holy Spirit. That's what the boot camp does. If nothing else, it tries to keep teach you you're not the center of attention. You're not the center of the activity. The commander in chief that is over you that's got his obligation to train you in the way so that he protects you and it will be vital for you when you do get into that war situation. That's the whole idea of getting this training. So that when you stand out there and somebody's shooting at you, I don't want this. <laughs> Do you run off? No. That's not the idea. You shoot back with the weapons that are given to you by the living God, and guess what? They're powerful and mighty. Amen. So they're pulling down our fortresses. Woo yeah. yeah. You see that? <laughs> Thank you, <Jesus>. <laughs> <laughs> Set your mind on the things of above. The power of the Spirit. The grace and mercy that He's given to you. All those promises that He's given to you. And not one has failed. We've read that before. Back there, and I think it was, I don't have it this week. But there's not one of his promises has ever failed. It Amen. said that in Amen. his book. Amen. I don't have it because that was last teaching, and I had that written down as I say, I believe somewhere. Not one of his promises has ever failed. Take that to heart. Remind him, God, you promised me that I would, if I did what you asked me to do, you would heal my body, and you'd take sickness away from the missing. You would take care of my children. You would bring them in. You promised, Lord. And he said, yes, I did. Thank you for reminding me. Yes. He already knew it. Psalms 139, don't forget that guy. He already knows what you're thinking. He already knows before there's a word on your tongue whether you say it or not. Careful. Uh, we'll go there. Proverbs. We will go there. Let's go to Proverbs, please. 
right after, you know, the, the Psalms, Proverbs. <laughs> Proverbs 23, please. His, he just keeps telling me, Dwayne, everything hinges on how you think. You can think victorious. I'm going to be victorious this day. Or are you going to be defeated by what you heard, what the world's told you? It's your choice. Ooh, wish you had to give me that choice. <laughs> so, uh, Proverbs 23, verse 7. Now, I've quoted this. I want you to see it, though. For as he thinks within himself, so is he. He says to you, eat and drink. But his heart is not with you. See, God knows the depths of your heart. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what's in your heart. That's what he's trying to clean up, too. And he said, you have to surrender your heart to him. Renew your mind to the things and give me your heart. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. I'm come for a heart that is broken and of a contrite spirit. That's what he wants. A heart that's willing to accept. You've never seen a soldier that has his own agenda. He's always thinking on what the, the commander and those who's planning to edit. What his orders are. That's exactly. You've got to do it his way. And a, a, you know, you've never seen an army that's any good, that has not done his training, has not obeyed to the point of death if it had to be to serve, you know, to protect somebody else next to you. That's what, that's what the Marine motto is. I'm not a Marine, but that is what it, they protect those that are near them of giving their lives for somebody else. That's what Jesus says is required of you to love mercy justly and to walk humbly with your God. Now, we're almost there. I don't have much more because you don't need much more after this. Isaiah, please. Isaiah 26. Because his spirit is working already in you to let you know if you're in tune to the spirit, you already know that this is something that the Lord has been dealing with. It's all the mind. Renew it. It's not new. We're just regrouping and saying, all right, yes, Lord, before give heed to the mourners, heed to the things which you have heard, least at any time they slip away. This is a big one. You don't want this to slip away. You want your mind to be renewed and be transformed by the renewing of your mind to the things of the spiritual. Because that is your salvation. That's your ticket out of this world. That's your victory while you're here. And you can bring your kids with you. Yes. yes. And grandchildren. Yeah, absolutely. And great grandchildren. <clears throat> Thanks, Johnny, for that one. Great grandchildren. <laughs> you're not the only one. Isaiah 26, verse 3. I like the King James Version. I don't have it, but I'm going to read what the New American Standard has. The steadfast of mine, thou will keep in perfect peace, because he trusts in me. Would somebody read that out of there? King James, please. That's a more better. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Yeah. He will keep him in perfect peace. You want perfect peace? I sure do when I go to bed. <laughs> I'd love to have that peace. Huh? And in, in the original Hebrew, he emphasizes that by saying to us. Oh. Keep him in peace, peace. You want peace, peace? Or turmoil, turmoil. Peace. Choose this day who you shall serve. That's I like, what it's I like it's verse 4 as well. Okay, read it for me. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Yes. Yeah, I have everlasting rock. I like strength better. It's his strength, not by your might, not by your power, but it's by his strength. Yes. You're delivered from sin, sickness, and poverty for his name's sake. Woohoo! Yes. Your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. And his peace was past all his sin, shall rule and reign in Christ Jesus. Oh, there's so many more that you just keep going, Lord, yes. But he's got this thing, you know, where he says, all right, now, you've got the idea now. Now, 
What are you going to do with it? Choose. Every morning you have a choice. Wake up refreshed. His mercies and grace are fresh and new each morning. Amen. Hallelujah, brother. Sister. It's fresh and new each morning. You can't lose. I just got to get out of the mindset of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, what am I going to do today? Choose. <laughs> oh, I have to choose? I don't to choose. The flesh gets weary in well-doing. Did you all hear that one? But Jesus renews your strength by walking after him, by praying in the Spirit, getting before him, getting your word, getting your uh, directions daily, your marching orders daily. That's what renews your strength when you're out there helping somebody else, putting others ahead of yourself. That's when it renews your strength. Amen. Because you get encouraged because that person was down and you got to help them. That boosts you and it helps that other person. That's why Jesus put it in there. Think of others as more important than yourself. Why? Because it'll help both of you. <laughs> it'll give you the victories. It'll cause you to triumph for your own things. And it won't let the enemy have access to your head by just idle. Uh, <laughs> that's where I am somewhere. It's just so you know, you don't sleep at night, you wake up in the morning and you're I don't have any strength. I don't have any willingness. I don't have anything that wants to go out in this world and do what I'm going to do. It takes every bit of effort just to get out the door to do what I'm called to do. Why? Because I let him have my evening, my rest. I let him. Yes, Lord. I let him have it. When you gave me the victory over it, I let him have the victory over my sleep because I didn't take my authority and take what I needed that's when I wake up in the morning, I'm not fresh and renewed because the flesh is basically like that, you know, the dog. Whichever one you feed the most is the one that's going to be in control. That's it. Yeah. So feed the right dog. Garf. I saw one running around here earlier, a little Siberian husky. Excuse me. <laughs> feed the right dog and the right dog will win. Amen. Choose this day. Your choice. God keeps telling us that. It's your choice. But I'll give you everything to do. Give you the power. I'll give you everything you need to win this battle. My son did it. You can do it. Because he put his spirit in you to do it. Because he knows you can't do it. Uh, I sit down someday and just contemplate. Oh yeah, God knew I couldn't do this. So he had to put in his spirit within me. The power and authority. Greater is he that is in me. I have good guidance and direction from the Holy Spirit if I choose to listen to it and not my flesh, what the flesh is telling me. Because the flesh is not going to sit down and sit down and pray all day long. The flesh is not going to want to get there and read the word and get in the study. The flesh just wants the easy way out. Did you hear that? The flesh wants the easy way out. And God's calling us to a warfare and a battle. And the battle can be won. It says so on page 59 or 642. All through the Bible, it says the battle is won by Jesus. You have the victory. You just have to apply what Jesus said. And he said it will not return void without accomplishing what it intended. Amen. Jesus rose from the dead. Because it, Jesus said, Lord, don't forsake me. But today, take me. Anyway, God came down, took him to heaven, and he won. It's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Now said, you have everything you need to live this life, to be victorious, to win the battles. You have to choose. You have to take this off the page, apply it to your circumstances, because Jesus says, I'll be backing you every way, but you have to take the initiative, Dwayne. You have to fight the good fight of faith. Yes, Lord, I've heard this and heard this and heard this every Sunday for the last 50 years almost. You have to do this. Choose. Submit. Surrender. Just give up the way. Quit fighting. Quit fighting the Holy Spirit and let him have his way. Yes, Lord. I know. I hear that a lot too. Cease striving and know that I am God. Let me have it. 
Which one's the cruise ship, not the battleship? Mm. Yeah. Wow, I like that one. What's on a cruise ship? Everything that caters to the caters flesh. To the flesh. What is a battleship? I know, I was on one of those. Yeah. And it was work 24 hours a day. You yeah. never had a chance to let up. Washing company. Yeah, oh yeah. As long as you did what the commander on the ship said, you was, did okay. But if one person didn't do his job on that ship, it would affect because everything hinged on everybody doing what God has told them to do. Well, I mean, the commander told them to do on, the, on that ship. Everybody had a job. They were trained ahead of time to do their job before they were even placed in the place of battle. They knew what their job was. <laughs> that was the best part. We were not uninformed of what we had ahead of us. Is that what God's doing in here this morning? Is warning you of what is ahead and preparing you for what the battle is ahead of time? Because he loves you. He's for you. He wants you to be victorious. Prosper and be in health as your soul prosper. It's his will. That his church be found in this louder hour in power and authority. It's his will that you go out of here in the victory. He doesn't want a defeated church. That doesn't glorify anybody. And you've been trained. You've been trained. You've been hearing the word for days and years and months and whatever else is there. To go out with this to take it to apply as one unit. In this little unit, there's several other units out there in the church, out there, out there in the Casper, that's doing the same thing. Now, he says, when you get everybody together on the same page, with the same spirit, with the same intent of obedience to the master, then you've got an army. And nothing by the gates of hell can prevail against it. Woohoo! Well, that's what God is saying. Now, he's waiting on us. And that's why we haven't seen a lot of things, because... He's still waiting on the church. We can has, haste, hasten. We can hasten the perfect return of Jesus by, you know, you know he's waiting. And the growing, the creation waits for the growing and manifestations of the Son of God. Oh, there's a freebie. Creation is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God to do what God's called them to do. Have that beautiful worship service. They've done their part to get the the. The rest of the congregation in the place have prepared, their hearts are prepared to hear the word of God. That's a vital point. A vital part of that is to get your heart ready to receive the word of God. And it takes their diligence and their faithfulness to bring you that word, to bring you that song, that spiritual melody that will pick you up, to get you open, to recognize that God is the one in control and he needs to be glorified. That opens your heart to grateful gratitude of what he's done for you. So when he comes there to hit you between the lips, you're not, you're, you don't get a crack lip because he's got the word already been planted in your heart and you already know what it's good for you. None of this is bad. He's for you, not against you. Whew, I've been impressed. <laughs> I'm getting carried away. <laughs> but everyone that God has chosen has a vital part in this. We're not alone. We all have a part to do. Choose this day who you shall serve. Father, we come before you. We thank you that your word that was heard here today will not return void without accomplishing in them that faith, that conviction, that healing, the deliverance, whatever they need. We thank you, Father, that word will not return to you void without accomplishing what it intended in these, your people. Encouragement, faith, and their willingness to go forth because you're at work within them to will and work for your good pleasure. So I thank you, Father, that your word is living and active amongst these pure people and they'll reap the benefits in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. One of the things I learned a couple years ago was, especially when I was getting ready to lay down and go to sleep and I could feel the mind start to spin, I would pray for God to send his guardian angels to protect my mind, my heart, my soul, and my spirit. I would cover all four of those in three points so that Satan didn't have a place. 
And it was interesting because I could feel, even though I could be spun up in my mind, once I would pray that, I could feel everything back off. And I could just be at peace. I'm going to start doing that when I wake up and start my day, too. I've never done it for daylight hours, and it's worked great for night, though. <laughs> I appreciate that because just like the praise and worship, that is a mighty weapon. You can use that before you go to bed, too. Sing praises to God. Worship. You know, put on that headphone for just a little bit to hear the word that says, Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Oh, heaven help us. Oh, yeah. You know what that does? That encourages you. And guess what? It just pushes out that demonic influence. Because he can't stand the fact that God is being worshipped. Amen. Yeah, let's go. There's a weapon. Good weapon. Anybody else? Mike, would you read Romans 8, 28? Romans 8, 28. I didn't have that, did I? Came right next to it. <laughs> Close, but not to Romans 8, 28. And that's not... And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Amen. Because when I get anxious, I think nothing is happening by accident. <laughs> and you, but then you thank God. Thank Him that there's a purpose Amen. to everything you're going through. And it says that little word that Tom would talk about. All things work for good. God causes all things. Not some. Not just a little here. A little there. All things to work for your good. That is encouraging. Thanks, brother. Again, this is not a one-man band. This is a unit that works together for the good. They're building up his body and the identification of the church. Father, bless these people. Let them go out here in the power of the Spirit and your protection.